Hello plebs. In this video, I'd like to talk about the concept of one tricking in UGO. I'm using text to speech because I lost my voice and am really ill. Sorry. Moving on. One tricking is a concept that comes from video games wherein there is a speciality or class mechanic. In Overwatch, a one trick is someone who plays one hero and only that hero even in situations where it would be more optimal to play a different hero. The idea is that despite the scenario and situation, it is better to play something you are good at rather than something you are bad at to gain the most and get the best results. The irony in Overwatch however is that the one tricks generally suck at their one trick hero regardless. XD. In UGO, since the release of Duelist Alliance on August 14, 2014 I can promise you that someone out there, somewhere in the world, has since then played no other deck in this entire game for over 3 years straight except Burning Abyss. Through all its different iterations, evolutions, sets, ban lists and formats, someone out there has played only Burning Abyss, and probably will continue to keep playing absolutely nothing else but Burning Abyss until the second coming of Christ. There is also probably some idiot out there who still runs Zoo. I'm looking at you, Duncan. This is what you could call one tricking in UGO. I'm sure many of you watching this video yourselves probably have a deck you have spent the better part of all last year playing, playing that deck and that deck alone. The advantage of one tricking decks should be fairly obvious. By investing so many hours into playing and learning a deck through many sets, formats, ban lists and niche situations you will gain a vast insight into the deck potentially to the point where you can no longer misplay any of the combos or decks interactions. There were probably zoo players who memorized every path and end field any given zoo hand could ever give you. Terra top plus a normal summon, Terra top plus a barrage, rat peer plus instant fusion, so many different variations of 2 to 3 card combos meticulously learned inside and out by one tricking a deck for so long. Another advantage of one tricking a deck in UGIO would be that sometimes when deciding what deck to play for a big event, it is important to play to your weaknesses and not just your strengths. Spiral is the best deck, but there is no point in taking Spiral to an event if your idea of a good end field is firewall pass. If you are really good at a deck and have played countless matches against other decks in the format, then you are more likely to top an event as a burning abyss one trick than trying to pick up a spiral deck the night before the event and misplaying your way into a giant card side event. There is also the question of money, and for some players having access to one deck, and one deck only with minor upgrades to your list every format is all that you can afford. Not a lot of people are willing to invest an arm, leg, and mortgage into playing UGO, and so for these players, one tricking Fire Fist or Evil Swarm is a valid way of enjoying the game without having to rob a bank. It is also really fun to one trick a deck that is versatile and adaptable to other engines. Burning Abyss Invoked, Burning Abyss Blue Eyes, Burning Abyss Infernoid and God knows what other mess you idiots have come up with. These are all decks that have been somewhat competitive at the regional level within the last few years. I would find it very hard to get bored of a deck capable of being run in so many different ways. Of course this does not come without its disadvantages. One tricking a deck isolates yourself off from potentially finding a deck you would find even more fun or a deck you would get more success at. There is a whole vast world of combos and interactions and other decks out there you could be missing out on having fun with. Second of all, the best way to beat a deck is to play that deck and learn all of its interactions and gain a better insight into that archetype from a first person perspective. If you invest a few hours into Trickstar or Spiral you will be more equipped at beating those decks as you have experienced them firsthand. In conclusion, one tricking a deck in UGO is probably not a good idea for the very competitive players, but there is obviously something very wholesome about developing a strong bond with a certain archetype. I think it is human nature to try make a name for yourself in a competitive environment like UGO. Because of this, a lot of players out there probably pride themselves in being that dark magician player or the guy who always plays Yangzing at locals. I'm sure that most of you probably know a lot of UG tubers because of their affiliation to a certain deck like Alan Theo with counter fairies and easy to fluffles or Duncan with garbage lord. One tricking allows you to become very good and adept at one deck, but also potentially miss out on other decks. But what do you think? Do you one trick any decks in UGO and if so, what archetype? Do you think one tricking is a viable strategy? 
Comment down below, like and subscribe, and until next time plebs, farewell.